I'm Doris Dean. After 17 years of on-the-job training as Grenada's ambassador to the United States and the Organization of American States, Dennis Antoine has courageously undertaken the task of crafting a guidebook for young diplomats coming to Washington, D.C. for the first time. He shares the wisdom of lessons learned in a new book titled Effective Diplomacy, A Practitioner's Perspective. Mr. Ambassador, welcome to Carib Nation, and it's a pleasure to talk with you again. You're no s stranger to Carib Nation, but this time we have you, well, we've had you on the hot seat many times. You've written a book called Effective Diplomacy, A Practitioner's Perspective, which is a, a handbook for the diplomatic corps, for consul generals, for ambassadors coming to represent their countries in the United States. And I have to say, my very first reaction to this book was, wasn't there one of these before? Why hasn't there been one of these before? Or at least some countries might have had some kind of a, a, a guide for ambassadors coming here. Tell me, how do ambassadors become ambassadors? <laughs> well, well, thank you, Darius. As you say, we've no have been no strangers. Let me thank you for welcoming to the studio again. And um, the question is a very big question. Um, ambassadors become ambassadors in many ways, many different ways. I think if you'd made a very good contribution to one of your political parties, that could have been a quid pro quo. Uh, mm -hmm. So you could have at least say, listen, I'm going to do this if I can get that post. So in many cases, most of the ambassadors have become political appointees. There are one or two, a few who are career um, officers who come through the ranks and, and rose to, to become ambassadors. I am one who was at work in education when I was called and asked to come to the embassy. And um, it was a bit surprising. While I had served prior to that, as counselor at the embassy where I did get some grounding, mm -hmm. I, I had no preparation to be an ambassador outside of my personal acumen. And so how does one become an ambassador? I think through his or her own initiative, in addition to the government identifying certain qualities or certain competencies that they may think that that person has to represent the country and particularly the party perspective because a lot of times you become a policy implementer mm -hmm. you become a spokesperson for the governing administration and and definitely while diplomacy is not politics but it is it is the implication and the ramification so while you are in the post of ambassador, you're therefore, by certain measures, a political operative. Mm -hmm. That takes me to the next question, and that is, how do we define diplomacy, which is one of the things I was going to ask in terms okay. of who determines what is diplomatic and what is not? Well, there has been a number of standards. As you know, there are a few conventions like the Geneva Convention, and, and, and among others, which began in the days when you used to have emissaries, when you would have messengers. If you look at the word envoy, and you look at the word mm -hmm. attaches, and you look at the word um, what is called representative, uh, a, an ambassador was a messenger from one government to another to bring goodwill in addition to, in those early times, right after World War mm -hmm. One, you used to send an emissary to speak to a particular government because we didn't have what we have today in terms of, of 24 hour news and, yeah. and we didn't have the kind of um, communication that we have, so we used to have to travel to bring messages. Mm. And so an ambassador as a messenger, but today it has another connotation because you are resident representative and that speaks to the integration, the international process of interrelationships that makes it possible for one government to have a sovereign spot here mm -hmm. where it conducts its business as part of the relationship with the, host, the country. host country. The whole idea of setting up a guideline for somebody who comes to be an ambassador, do you think that because, as you say, there were messengers chosen usually by the government, but 
for foreign service, for career foreign service officers. Are they, they any better trained than those who are handpicked or political appointees? I think in, in many cases they may have a better orientation, a better understanding of the day-to-day -day functions of the system mm -hmm. uh, of government. As an example, today many ambassadors may be chosen from the diaspora in some cases and they're not as in tune to the local processes mm. if they were not in touch. But what they're chosen for are some of the skills, some of the expertise. And, and in that context, they may go to capital for what is called an orientation mm. to, to sort of a brief them to their mission, but not necessarily to give them an in-service for their function a broader a br that's person. that's the issue yeah. and so when i when i came to be ambassador i had no pre what is called no preparation mm -hmm. and i found it uh, wow it was no it was protocol to follow. it was amazing that i have to get into the pitfalls and get out it's sink or swim it's trial and error mm. could you imagine that you were doing this on the basis of hey I have to find out the smarts to do it. Yeah. And so I realized there is something missing here. I had no orientation training for an officer of the status that I, I, I undertook. So, so well, I, how dangerous is that? For, well, it, especially for small countries like the Caribbean. It has, it has some, some issues. I do believe if an individual has the proper acumen, as I said, intelligence mm. to know that they have to know have to jump before they homework. go, so yeah. they have to jump in, you know, we, we ready. They have to prepare themselves, mm. and part of preparation is indeed you have to read, you have to learn, and, and so it becomes a, a more difficult task because you have to prepare. Mm -hmm. You have to know before you go because you can't, if you know that you really want to make sense mm -hmm. of, of, of your functions and you have to go to meet another um, ambassador or another representative of a country, you had prepared, you had better get down to preparing mm -hmm. because you need to have your talking points. But generally there is a desk officer in the ministries that can prepare you for meetings. So there is a process in place which if works well can help mm. because if the individual has his own act together so to speak, he can carry the message. Again, it's messages yes. because as ambassador you have to talk within your framework mm -hmm. of guided talking points. If you're an ambassador, and your country send you. Remember, you have titles, plenipotentiary, ENP. Mm -hmm. e e e Those things mean something, mm -hmm. because what does that mean? <laughs> For many people, we hear the word; it sounds like a big word, and and many people do not know what that means. There are ambassadors that are not ENP, extraordinary and plenipotentiary. If I spoke as an ambassador, it my country speaking. Mm. It, it, that's part of the meaning. So you have to be careful what you say, because it's your country saying that. Hence the diplomacy. Hence the diplomacy issue. So it's about measured responses. It is about knowing your limits in a particular genre of, of activities. In other words, today, for example, when we're talking diplomacy, it is not about international mm -hmm. relations alone. It is about health diplomacy, it is about energy diplomacy, it is about education mm -hmm. diplomacy, so it's about oil and gas, it's, it's about science. So an ambassador now cannot just have a glib tongue, he cannot just have to learn to speak yes. and, 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 and be heard. He, must be he has to be substantive. We'll be back and talk some more with Ambassador Dennis Antoine about his new book, Effective Diplomacy, right after this short break. Exercise and eating healthy, that's the best thing for your body. The day you stop smoking, you start to reduce your risks. Support smoke-free public spaces. Love your body. Celebrate Caribbean Wellness Day. Make every day a wellness day. To take good care of yourself, nothing's better And every single day should be Caribbean Wellness Day Join the wellness revolution, live a healthy lifestyle Brought to you by Caribbean Wellness Day
deeply inside and outside. I'm very excited about today's program. Looking at you, I can tell that you've traveled the journey. <laughs> One television organization brings America close to the people, stories and events that affects Caribbean life. You're watching Carib Nation Television. Welcome back to Carib Nation. We're talking with Ambassador Dennis Antoine, former Ambassador Dennis Antoine, uh, former Ambassador of Grenada to the United States and to the Organization of American States. And he's written a book called Effective Diplomacy, A Practitioner's Perspective, which is a handbook for young diplomats coming up in the Caribbean. Ambassador, what would you say was your biggest mistake not having had this training? Well, it's not having had the training. I, I think it, it is... Um, what was your biggest <coughs> blunder? Did you make any serious <laughs> diplomatic I blunders? I, I can't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I think um, one knows when one is not effective on occasions when they wanted to be better. And, and by that I mean, how do you get access to some of the meaningful venues and personalities in the process. It is very difficult for an ambassador of a small island state to access the White House, mm -hmm. to access mm -hmm. the State Department, to access some of the major European countries that you really want to get to so you can put your country's interests and, 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 and issues before them looking for resources because our diplomacy was bread and butter diplomacy. Our diplomacy was development diplomacy. Mm -hmm. and, and so when you're doing that, you want access, you want to get in. Because you didn't have anything to offer like some of the others, ah, you were looking you, for you, something you, to but come you know, your way. You know, when I learned how we could be effective, I was more effective, and that is there are occasions when the big guys come calling, mm. and if I had known that before I learned it, I was going to be a little more effective quicker. Because when there's a major vote, for example, taking place at the UN, I get to reach, meet, meet all the guys from mm -hmm. Europe, all the guys from, from Latin America. They come right. to, 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 to make a demarche. They come to do a presentation, mm -hmm. and we want your country's vote. Mm -hmm. Ah, they're beginning to realize, okay, okay I can't. so I have something that yes. you need, but I needed to know when you would need it so I can get myself ready. Yes. Those yes. are the nuances. Those are the issues that, that you learn how to adjust your your mingling and your your whole demarche that you would make on your colleagues and on various you know regions and divisions of international representation, even the World Bank mm, and yeah. the fund, you have to have good timing. Mm -hmm. and you talked about um, we were talking earlier about lobbying, mm -hmm. lobbying Capitol Hill. Now we have to be there. We have to be heard. Our agenda has to be, and you have to know when. So if I knew before, my goodness, if who do I lobby first? But especially since the Caribbean region as a body does not really have official lobbyists. No, that's, that's the issues. And you see, you said the Caribbean region. Mm -hmm. And when you spoke, you spoke as though the Caribbean was a, a state. But Which when is. the Caribbean carries itself, we carry ourselves as, as individual, individual little, little countries. Whereas in going to a certain um, let's say State Department, Capitol Hill again, they look at us as the Caribbean. So I'm going there talking about green, then they say in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to talk about green, they say in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. because there's a pie of that they course. cut up. So we have to know how to make this pie bigger rather than going exactly, and trying to pinch Because if you piece, get a small pie for the, the Caribbean, issue. then you have to divide it in 15 pieces. That's the issue. So do you think then that that should have been one of the key functions of CARICOM? That, that is not written in black and white, so to speak? Well, I think CARICOM Secretary had tried. CARICOM Secretary is at the disposal. CARICOM Secretary is an implementing agency. CARICOM Secretary responds to our 
requests. Mm -hmm. And so it is how we effectively utilize that secretary as a resource to our functions. But there was this there and here. There was this kind of um, uh, of territorial issues, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And I'm I'm speaking now after the fact. Mm -hmm. But but when I served, I did feel that there wasn't adequate collaborative because we are partners in a process. We're bigger if we can bring in the Secretary as armament that supports us because they're bright people who can really, if you get a briefing from, uh, but we used to use it. But I don't think it was effective mm. and consistent enough. That is, that is what and I that could is, look back yeah, saying. Yeah. Um, that is, I suppose, one of the reasons why we often hear Caribbean nationals voicing dissatisfaction with CARICOM. And with ambassadors, very often we hear people say, well, we don't see the ambassador, we don't go to the embassy that much, or the embassy is not involved with what is happening. And I guess people have not been made to understand what is involved and what, what was it that you had to do that really kept you from the more social side of, of being an ambassador. It's like yes, it's yes. walking that, that fine line of trying to do the homework and catch up, not having had the training or the, the orientation, yeah. but at the same time, providing both sides of, of this coin because exactly. you've got to deal with the government, your host government, but you've also got to deal with those people that you represent. Now that I am outside looking in at the diplomatic process, I, I can see how that perception could have been perpetuated. But, but, but I think it depends a lot on what I talk about diaspora diplomacy. Mm -hmm. You have the Caribbean diaspora pushing on the and the ambassadors who represent the country as the official representatives for, with an expectation. Mm -hmm. But then there is no understanding of the expectation that the yes, embassy the should have of the, the, of the diaspora. Mm -hmm. So I think there again is an opening for greater collaboration. But who serves whom? It, it depends on how you're approached. I made my, I, and, and I'm not saying that to make any criticism, but I was accessible in that I found a value in associating myself with a lot of diaspora activities. Mm -hmm. Because if you know how to, you can have a lot of nuggets in the diaspora. That's where that you can, get the information. Exactly. The feedback. Yeah. And so you, you are extended also, because they can bring a message that you can't bring. Mm -hmm. a, a diaspora person, can bring a political, a U.S. political message to the, the mm -hmm. U.S. political with, that you can't you do. Can't say, and, and so if you understand that you have that access to, to a real messenger that can impact U.S. policy on your behalf. Mm -hmm. And so the issue of, um, of diaspora engagement is a critical issue, as you notice, most government now is um, of course, establishing a known. desk, yes. but most of it also is aimed at getting a vote home and influencing the vote or home. Or getting so, funds. So everybody is using, the diaspora is attempting to utilize the governance and, and the strength of the presence here, mm -hmm. and so the embassy has to learn how to do that. Mm. That's another skill. It, <laughs> it, has is, to it, be is, it is a very important skill. Very important skill, that because as you say, technology is making it easier for the diaspora to be involved. Yeah. And uh, the, the governments are now recognizing the value, of course, because the diaspora has also grown. There is no question. The issue of, um, of database of, of skilled personnel, even within the, the Caribbean um, community, you have the skilled mm -hmm. movement of skilled people. But within the diaspora, you have so many skilled people mm -hmm. that can be harnessed to the value, to the, to the benefit of the missions, the missions in critical areas, in, in critical times. Mm -hmm. I could just recall the, the hurricane uh, you know, that, that wiped Grenada out oh, during yes. 2005 while I was the ambassador, ambassador then. And it Let's was talk, take a short break. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to break you, but we're going to take a short break and come back and talk about the hurricane. Indeed, we'll indeed. be right back after this short break with more on Carib Nation. Exercise and eating healthy, that's the best thing for your body. The day you stop smoking, you start to reduce your risks. 
Support smoke-free public spaces. Love your body. Celebrate Caribbean Wellness Day. Make every day a wellness day. Gotta take good care of yourself, nothing's better. And every single day should be Caribbean Wellness Day. Join the wellness revolution. Live a healthy lifestyle. Brought to you by Caribbean Wellness Day. Welcome back to Carib Nation. I'm Darius Dean, and my guest today is former Ambassador of Grenada, Dennis Antoine. He has written a book entitled Effective Diplomacy, uh, Practitioner's Perspective. Ambassador, uh, we were talking about what happened when you were ambassador, and Grenada was wiped out by Hurricane, was it Ivan? Indeed, indeed. Yes. That, that was one of the most, um, I could not, I would not be able to forget that, and that in a way, influence some of the issues that are right there. How many embassies had or do have an emergency evacuation plan for their citizens? Imagine that 911 occurred in mm. New York City and there were countries that evacuated their people. How many Caribbean countries could have gotten up into the fray of things and, and pulled the people mm. and said, you here is where we have a contingency for those who are the water of the country, not necessarily yes. those who are citizens and residents here. But uh, even these issues, if something is happening in a certain country now, the U.S. would deploy forces to go and bring its people out. True. Now, how many embassies here have that capacity? Not that each one should have it, but you have a region. Why don't we have a collective, mm -hmm. what I call, scheme or strategy? Well, there is one there. Maybe. We have the regional Sidera. emergencies. Sidera, but yes. What is its function in the United yeah. States? Uh, as, the relationship as opposed to, here. Uh, right, so then that, is emer that has emerged over the years as we looked at what happened during Hurricane Ivan. It was Sidera that I relied on uh -huh. for knowing what happened in my, what was happening in Grenada then. And, and that was one of the most powerful, realistic, what I call experience, where one morning you wake up and you just know that you don't have anyone to communicate mm. with as a country. Right. And you were still there as an ambassador. A representative. Yeah. And people are calling on you. What do you do? And, and suddenly you realize the embassy does have at least a certain space in the process mm -hmm. because people are calling for answers even though there isn't uh, access to answers in the country. And so it was an experience that I have written about in, 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 in the sense that you had to do things and you had to learn mm -hmm. on the job because there was no <coughs> blueprint. There was no contingency for mm -hmm. such occasion. Right. Well, this is a lesson for, <laughs> for governments at, at all levels and in all, in all realms uh, across the Caribbean because, as you say, this is the practice in the Caribbean. And we have a, a, a cadre of young people coming up as well, ambassadors. Well, I wouldn't say it's across the Caribbean. We have some good models. I always, and I remarked in there with Barbados and the maturity mm -hmm. that they've demonstrated in when one comes in, one goes out, and there True. is an interaction so that there is a transition that is logical, mm -hmm. but you do not just swipe wipe everything one out, out and, start and all over again. put one in. I had and, a discussion about that. And then that there is no the relevance uh, 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 of, of what you did, as though what you did did not Count. Count. Exactly. And so one has to be aware of these things, and I think there needs to be better transitioning from one diplomatic, um, what is called, uh, run, uh, mm -hmm. a tenure, to the other. I, I think it is painful. It is part of stress, stressful. Mm -hmm. I found it very disrespectful. 
I found it, I, I thought it demonstrated a, a disrespect for service. Mm. After all, it was a, it's a sacrifice in many cases for those who leave other more lucrative Physicians, areas to yes. come and, and spend and time in these issues. And there, there are too many, um, it is not good many to put it that falls. way. Yeah. Uh, yes, it could be better. There is need for the small developing countries to demonstrate uh, a more mature sense of building capacity mm -hmm. in its representation abroad mm -hmm. by drawing on what the one who was before and building on building it. On I'm not saying that you have to come and do what I did. Right. But I'm, but saying I'm sure there's something that you must have left that could be of some exactly benefit. That's exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. Well, Ambassador, thank you so much. I, I hope that, uh, and I'm sure, that there will be an ambassador somewhere, at least some new ambassadors. I hope that there's one in every embassy, that you left one in every embassy. <laughs> but I think that um, it is a good start, and I congratulate you on having the courage to say I am to, pleased uh, to hold this up and say that, say to my colleagues, put something in the record. Yeah. Because when you pass through, let the record see that you, your sojourn when you did something, it's the best that you did, leave a footprint. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is how our history is, 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 is to be developed. Yeah. And we, we have to continue it. And I hope that this in some way inspires somebody. Let me see what he wrote. And I could do better than that of and, do something. and do something. Better. Right. Well, congratulations once again. And uh, it's a great pleasure to talk to you about that. And good luck with it. I'm, I'm sure you'll move on to the next level. Thank you, Darius. Thank you very much. And thank you to Carib Nation. You've always been kind to invite me out here and to let me have my voice in the process. I thank you kindly. As always, our pleasure. Thank you so much for watching Carib Nation. Until next time, I'm Darius Dean.